Hello Voxel fans! Today we're going to take a look at how you can quickly take 2D pixel art and convert it into 3D voxel art in just a few minutes. This video is sponsored by the Sandbox Creator Fund, which now has over 75 artists making incredible models for the marketplace that will be launched later this year. If you'd like to apply to be part of the team that's creating the very first assets for the Sandbox, visit sandbox.game or see the link in the description. The main programs we're going to be using for this tutorial are Magic of Voxel and A-Sprite. You can still accomplish this tutorial in other voxel editors like Cubicle and graphics programs like Photoshop, but the steps will be a little different. If you're interested in learning to do this process in other software, let me know down in the comments. I chose Magic of Voxel because it's free and makes this process very easy. A-Sprite is normally $14.99, but an older version is available for free that has all the tools we need. I highly recommend buying A-Sprite if you enjoy making pixel art. You can find the download page for PC and OS X in the description. Sorry Linux users, if you want the free version, you'll have to compile it yourself. There are a few notes to remember when importing graphics into Magic of Voxel. 1. Image files have to be in the PNG format, otherwise they won't work at all. 2. Anything larger than 126 by 126 pixels will get cropped. This is the largest volume size that Magic of Voxel can use. You will need to manually crop and resize the image you want to use in a 2D program like Paint, Photoshop, A-Sprite, or GIMP before importing it into Magic of Voxel. 3. Magic of Voxel will try to select the palette colors closest to your image, so the palette you are using makes a big difference on how things will look when importing. Let's start with something very simple, a tile block like you'd see in a game like Minecraft. Here, I have a tile set by Anna Kalisa, which you can get from their itch.io page or check out their Patreon. Links in the description. Let's try dragging it right into Magic Voxel. If we remember notes 2 and 3, we can see that the image is too big, and we don't have a proper palette set for it. Let's start by setting the correct palette. Open the file in A Sprite. In the palette panel, we can see that all the colors used in this pixel art have been collected together. As is common for pixel art, a limited palette was used. A Sprite has an easy way for us to export this palette as a PNG that Magic of Voxel will understand. We click the Edit Palette button, then Save. PNG should be the default file type. Make a name, then click OK. Going back to Magic of Voxel, click the Folder button to load a new palette file. But the graphics still doesn't look right. That's because Magic of Voxel was using the wrong palette when importing. To fix it, we need to import the tile map again. That looks a lot better. There is something important to note about the palette file, though. If you're using the free version of A-Sprite, the palette file looks like this. It saves index 0, which is black, in the top left pixel. Magic of Voxel reads the PNG backwards, so the unusable index 256 comes from the top right corner of the PNG. We can see that the light purple that A-Sprite calls index 16 does not appear in Magic of Voxel, and A Sprite's black index 0, which isn't a color actually used in the pixel art, is put in Magic of Voxel as index 241. We can easily fix this mix up in A Sprite. Click index 16, and from the palette editor, click copy. Now click on index 0 and paste. Now, when we save the palette and load it into Magic of Voxel, the light purple will appear. If you own the current version of A Sprite, the process is even simpler. Go to the palette menu and press save. Make sure to select PNG or it will default to the A sprite format. In this version, palettes export with the bottom cropped off. In Magic of Voxel, this imports the colors to the bottom of the palette, so no colors are missing at the top. Now that the colors in Magic of Voxel are set up correctly, we can crop our tile map to the section we want to use, making sure it's under the maximum size of 126 by 126 pixels. Using the rectangular marquee tool, Select the tiles we want to import. Let's use this section, which is 16 by 48 pixels. Our final block size should be 16 by 16 by 16, so these tiles make three sides of our final cube. From the sprite menu, click Crop, then Save As from the file menu. Remember to make it a PNG and give it a new name so the whole tile sheet isn't written over by the cropped version. Anna Kalisa was nice and let me share this section of the tile map for free. You can find a download link for these three tiles and the palette in the description, so you can follow along for the next part. Now when we drop this into Magic of Voxel, only our selected tiles are imported. From this strip, we want to wrap it into a cube. Let's turn on the grid view and ortho mode so we can see what we're doing more easily. 
From the 16 by 16 grid in A sprite, I could tell that the edge of the tile is supposed to be on the T shape here. So let's use the box selection tool in rectangle mode to grab the voxels from the right side. From the rotation menu, click the Z button. The object space was automatically expanded, but is one voxel too narrow for our final goal size of 16 by 16 by 16? Let's set the 15 to a 16, but we'll leave the 46 as is. Pressing Ctrl, we can left click hold and drag the voxels which aren't selected into position, tucked next to the part we rotated. Select the left side tile using the rectangle selection again. Ctrl left click and drag the left side in front of the back voxels and into the position. From the tool menu, click Fit to shrink the volume to our final size. Changing the selection tool back to box mode, grab the voxels from the back side between the left and right so the whole side is selected except for the left and right edges. From the select menu, click copy, then paste to duplicate the selection. Press the Z rotation button twice to flip the duplicate, then control drag it to the opposite side to complete the cube. Click the none button to deselect everything. Now we're going to do some fancy moves to really take advantage of the 3D space. First, we're going to make two new colors that aren't in the model anywhere. Selecting an unused part of the palette, we'll use the color menu to make a red swatch and a yellow swatch. Then using the attach tool in face mode, click the empty bottom and drag up to fill the cube with yellow. With the paint tool in box mode, make an inner square of red, so the yellow is just a single voxel outline. Switch the paint tool to face mode, then click and drag down on the red so it goes all the way down to the bottom of the cube. These two color zones will help us model some depth into the design without getting confused about how deep we're carving into the block. With the erase tool in face mode and neighbor search set to 8, we'll work our way around the block, clicking on the dark purple voxels so the yellow is exposed, then clicking again to show the red. This won't work on the edge areas where it's all yellow, so only click once on those. With all the dark purple gone, do this again for the dark green, but only click once to show the yellow. Now doing each side one at a time, select all the brown rocks with the box selection tool, using shift click to add more voxels to the selection as needed. Then drag them back one space so they overlap the yellow. Once all the stones are a step back on all four sides, we can use the Replace Color tool to change all the yellow to the dark green and the red to the dark purple. Finally, we can select the top of the cube with the box selection and give it a randomized green grass. In the console, type RAND16 and press Enter, which will turn the selected voxels to colors 1 through 6. Making sure to leave the top selected so no colors outside the selection are changed, Use the Replace Color tool to turn three of the colors to lime green, two to bright green, and one to medium green. Now the top of the block looks like grass with a nice variety. And that's it! We made a nice looking block from 2D sprites in just a few minutes. We can clean it up a bit by beveling the edges, giving a rocky texture to the underside, or even scaling it up and adding more details. How you want the finished block to appear will depend on how you want to use it. Now you can take the same technique and do brick walls, wooden boards, or many other tiles. Once the sandbox is released, you'll be able to import these blocks into VoxEdit and upload them to the marketplace. Just remember, if you're using someone else's tiles, you need to obey their terms of service. Some artists require written permission or extra fees in order to modify their work, and that includes turning them into 3D graphics. Never rip graphics from a game or download them from Google Images without finding the artist and checking their rules. Using someone else's tiles to create assets for a game like The Sandbox could get you in trouble for copyright infringement, so always make sure you have the proper permission or create your own original works from scratch. I hope this tutorial gave you some inspiration. If you found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when there's more Voxel news and tutorials. Thank you for watching.